but the scams I'm going to talk about um, are three good scams really and it happened to me so again personal stories yes I have been scammed and I've, there's probably three scams that I could talk about that are actually worth talking about because um, they were actually good scams if you like uh, well done and um, the first one that I'm going to talk about is when I went to Bali on our honeymoon now I've been to Bali before and I like Bali when we flew to Bali the only place we could get currency from for Bali is at the airport now that's a scam in itself the exchange rate that you get for for money in the airports is it's a, a legal scam but that won't class as a scam but that's what happened so we got a basic amount of money in the airport just so we had some money to to spend in Bali so anyway, the following day when we got up for breakfast time we had our breakfast and then had to walk around to exchange some money and there was a few little booths like they have here in Thailand with regard to money exchange but it was just a box with some exchange details on it and I was looking for something a little bit more substantial because it looked dodgy in the first place but anyway we we needed a bit of money so we looked at one of these boxes and it was like outside of the front of a shop and we thought oh, okay we'll we'll get some money here because the exchange rate fluctuates every day in Bali as it does everywhere else in the world um, when we looked at the exchange rate for £100 we looked as if we were going to make another 5 or £6 in the exchange rate because it was a, at a higher price so we opted to go for that and as soon as we asked at the shop these three young lads appeared with a bag around his waist and then instantly I thought, oh, this, this, this doesn't look very good. So there was three young people and I said I wanted to change £100 and they just looked menacing people and you just wouldn't want to mess with them. And it was like, oh, okay. So anyway, I knew how much I should get because he had a, a calculated the amount of money I should get on the phone and he counted the money out in front of me and I thought, oh, I've got a good deal here. And the next thing he said, oh, hang on a minute. And he, he put it in two bundles and he started recounting it. And then when he, he gave me the money, I think, okay, I've watched him count it. And he gave me the money and off we walked. And, and then we went for a coffee and I thought there was something dodgy about this because he actually stopped counting and he moved the money into two separate piles. And lo and behold, when I worked it out, sat in the coffee shop he'd taken 20 pounds off me he diddled me by 20 pounds and the scam was how he did it was misdirection i should have actually realized what was going on because i used to use misdirection when i used to have my children's entertainment business and i was a, a children's entertainer i used to do magic tricks and that was worked by misdirection and when i look back at that, what he did to me misdirected me and therefore by counting the money then putting it to two separate piles and putting that your eyes follow the hand and what had happened he'd moved some of the amount of money on the second pile so it worked out that i got 20 pounds but so i was taken for about 20 pounds in bali and once i learned that lesson 20 quid wasn't a lot to lose but if, if they did that to many tourists that's a, a lot of money to be taken and then that day we found a proper a cash exchange place and we got a, a poor rate but you knew it was a proper genuine cash exchange place they counted the cash in the machine you counted the cash in front of them you signed a piece of paper and everything was done legally and above board so my advice is if you go to Bali or any other country and if you, you got one of these little shady money exchange places be prepared you're going to get scammed you're going to lose some money so heed my warning, especially in Bali, go to the proper exchange places, don't go to these little shady booths because we felt intimidated. I'm a big guy and I felt intimidated by these three young guys stood around me while we were changing money. You give him the money, he does the exchange and away you go. And it's only afterwards when you look at it and you count it and you think, yes, I've been, been done. So that, that was the, the scam in Bali. Now the, the scam in China, I've got to take my hat off to the people who scammed me in China and to this day I'm amazed 
how I fell for it. It's only afterwards, and, and I can tell everybody how it happened, but at the time, afterwards, I'm thinking 100% for the scam. It worked so effortlessly, so smoothly, and I was so uh, taken in by it. So, when you go to China, there are many scams in China, but this is the tea ceremony scam. And it's so simple in its, its methods, but it works so, so good. So anyway, this is how it worked. We were visiting China on our holidays and we've gone to Shanghai city and we were down by the waterfront taking all the photographs, as you do, because it's a, a nice location. It was me and I had a Thai girlfriend at the time and we'd gone to Shanghai and everybody was taking pictures, selfies, dronies and everything that you can imagine. So we were approached by a Chinese young man with a, what appeared to be his mother and his sister and they asked whether we would take their photograph for them he could speak perfect English as could his mother and as could his sister if they really were a family and he was asking where we were going to where how long we'd been in in China for and I explained to him this is our first day in in Shanghai then we were going to go to Xi'an to see the terracotta warriors and he said, well, we live in Xi'an, we live in Xi'an. He said, so we're only here for two or three days, so I'll give you my email address. And when you get to Xi'an, we'll act as your, your guide if you want, and we can tell you where to go, how you get the best prices. So I thought, oh, that's nice, friendly type of guy. And his mother and his, his sister was talking to my Thai girlfriend who could speak very good English and they just made her feel good and made me feel good and we're talking about holidays and where we come from it's just as if I'd known him for years and then he said oh we're going for a, a tea ceremony he said it's one of Chinese one of China's must see must do things to do and um, I think well I've never heard of this before and he said yeah yeah it's just around the corner just around the corner come with us and um, he said, you know, experience a tea ceremony. So me and my girlfriend at the time, like mum and dad, he said, oh, well, you don't have to. He said, li it's literally five minutes around the corner. He said, it lasts for about half an hour. And he said, you'll thoroughly enjoy it. Um, okay. So we went and they never stopped talking about their holidays. Like this has been their first time in Shanghai and um, that they were happy to meet us and they just made you feel good and at ease so then we walked to this little like townhouse and uh, it was all nicely decorated at the front and we we walked in and there was all the, these tea ladies with their chinese gowns on our chinese dress and with music playing in the background i thought wow oh, this looks nice looks very smart then we all sat down and uh, he's still talking and he's still being very friendly and he's he's saying I'll, I'll translate for you he said about the whole ceremony and I said oh I'll get my camera I'll take some pictures oh he said you can't you can't take any pictures because of the custom of everything you know he said that, it's just the way it is he said you just don't he said it's a memory that, that you're building not you know the pictures and I said oh, uh, oh okay so anyway the music and the tea comes and then we, we had maybe six different cups of tea and the ladies explaining where it come from how it's made and it was the ambience was fantastic it was a great feeling and it was a, a good experience to be fair and then come at the end of the the tea ceremony this guy gets a wad full of money out and pays pays the lady and i seen this big wad of money coming and he said oh he said les he said what we've done we, we bought you a tea set 30 minute tea experience and I said oh uh, I don't have a hundred pounds on me yeah, well, we, we, there's a cash machine just around the corner if you need to go and get some cash we'll show you where the cash machine is and it was then that the, the, the it was then that the penny started to drop thinking oh what, what's happened here but then he was still carrying on talking English and we were sort of ushered out of the building with the, the lady in the in the authentic Chinese dress going towards the the ATM machine all the time he was talking was about the holidays how we're going to enjoy the holidays other things that he suggested that we should he just never stopped talking so he sort of distracted you from what you're about to take out of the cash machine and then 
we got to the cash machine, drew the money out, and I give the lady the money. And then again, because it was in in China, as I was sort of first day there, not totally all fair with the money, and it's just like, oh, um, yeah, that's about a hundred pounds. We just paid a hundred pounds for for six cups of tea. But I give the money, and I'm, I, I felt embarrassed because this guy had bought me the the tea set, and I'm thinking. I'd be embarrassed if I said, oh, I'm not going to pay that. So the emotional side of it, that puts you into a situation as well, of not wanting to feel embarrassed or shy or anything like that. And then, of course, the, the get out of it was, oh, where are you going next? Are oh, we going up to see so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so street? Oh, well, we've been there. So he said, there's my email address. And he said, when you get to Xi'an, he said, we'll meet you there. And he said, we'll, we'll show you around. He said, it's been lovely to meet you. He said, but we're off to so-and-so, so, -and -so, so -and -so, a, a different part of Shanghai that never even heard of. And um, so off they went. And he pointed us in the direction of where we needed to go to. And off we went and I'm sat there thinking, I'm sure I've just been scammed. I think that was a very expensive tea session. And then when we got back to the hotel that day, we, we were looking through the, the various brochures and it said about the Chinese Chinese tea scab, if you get offered to go to a Chinese uh, tea ceremony, decline it because it's a scam. And I learned afterwards. And um, But I can still laugh to this day because of the professionalism of these young people who did this to me, who was very skeptical about people anyway. I've got to give them a thumbs up for being scammed, how easy it was for them to do it and how professional they were to do it. So my advice, if you're going to China, do not go for the tea ceremony because you'll get scammed out of the money. <laughs> <coughs> so the third scam, again, stupidity on my behalf, I've got to say, it was in Hong Kong. It was whilst I was with my Chinese wife and I'm very skeptical about people um, anyway. So I always have my guard up. I know the Chinese story that I've just told you, my guard was totally down. So yeah, I'm very skeptical about people. And my Chinese wife at the time said, you're very untrustworthy, you don't trust anybody. She said, you need to learn to trust people. And I said, yeah, 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 okay, okay. I said, but I said, I'm generally untrusting. I said, I have to, to build up the trust with the people that are, are dealing with me. I said, because there's a lot of bad people in the world. But anyway, she kept telling me I need to chill out. I, do, I need to, you know, trust people a little bit more than what I do. So anyway, whilst I was traveling around the world, I decided that I want to buy myself a Canon 5D camera as my treat for going around the world and to take photographs for forever really for the rest of me worldly travels and I'd done a lot of research on the camera Canon 5D and that was the camera and in England it was going to cost me about two thousand pounds but everywhere else it was about fifteen sixteen hundred pounds and in Hong Kong it worked out at the cheapest at fifteen hundred pounds so I had the figure in my mind how much I was going to pay for this Canon 5D. So in Hong Kong, so in Hong Kong, I went to one of the, the Canon camera shops. In my mind, Canon 5D, Canon 5D, this is what I'm going to get. I've, I've got to kick myself for being so naive and stupid. But the things kept rattling around in my mind. My wife says I need to be more trusting with people. And at the end of the day, I would say don't trust salesmen. Salesmen will just tell you what you want to hear. And they are the biggest scammers in the world, in my mind, as salesmen. Because they want to sell and they'll tell you anything that you want to hear. So anyway, this guy is going on about the 5D. And then he mentions the 7D. He says, well, the 7D, it's, it's, a, it's a different model. He said, but it's a more newer model. So therefore it's more advanced and it has better features. He said, let me show you, let me explain. And of course, anybody that knows about cameras can make a bad camera look good and a good camera look bad. So he's going on about the 7D and how much it was and how an improvement it is and what a better camera is than the 5D. So in my mind, my wife says, I need to trust people, I need to trust people. So I said to the guy, okay then, 
had done no research on the Canon 7D. I had no idea what the camera was. So I, I thought, okay, I'm going to listen to this guy. He knows what he's talking about. I don't, so I'll take his advice and I'll listen to it. And he talked me into buying the Canon 7D camera. And that was £2,000 for the Canon 7D. And um, there was a niggle in the back of my mind. There was a niggle in the back of my mind. And I thought, because I didn't do any research, I wasn't sure. But I got talked into buying it and I paid £2,000 for it. And as soon as I got back to the hotel, I googled Canon 7D and it's nowhere near as good as the Canon 5D. And I could have got the Canon 7D from England for £1,200. And I just like went ER and I just thinking, stupid, stupid, absolutely stupid. Me and the chat, me and my Chinese wife had a massive argument that day because of you told me to trust him. I trusted him. I said, look what happened. I said, you know, my gut feeling was don't listen to him. But I said, you're coming inside of my head and telling me to trust people, trust people. I said, well, there you go. I said, I've paid more for a camera than I could have paid for less in England. And from that day on, every time I took a photograph with that Canon 7D, I hated it. I hated it that much that I'd been scammed and it was a memory every time I took a photograph that when I got back to England, the first thing I did was sell the 7D and I sold it for 900 pounds. Even though I'd paid 2000 pounds for it, such was the disgust in myself that every time I took a picture on this camera, it reminded me of being scammed in Hong Kong. So whoever got the 9D got a bargain because they got it £300 cheaper than they could have paid for it. But I lost £1,100 because I trusted a salesman in Hong Kong. So stupidity on my behalf. But yeah, people ask me whether I've been scammed. And there's three scams that I'll talk about. And I don't mind talking about them because if it helps somebody else out so they don't get scammed, all the better. So I hope you found it enjoyable the scams of what people get scammed for if you like it give it a thumbs up if you don't like it give it a thumbs down leave your comments down below about if you've been scammed i know one or two people have already left their comments about their being scammed so i hope you got some value out of it so until the next video from les living the dream in thailand bye for now